Yeah, hello and welcome back to the CPU Galaxy channel. Today I want to repair this nice old laptop from the early 90s. It's actually a very handy one in a nice form factor. On the back side here we have the label around. We can see it's a Siemens Nixdorf PCD 3 NSX with a 386SX CPU and a clock of 16 MHz. Here we can see also on the label the configuration and it shows 1 MB of RAM and 40 MB of hard disk. Manufactured in calendar week 45, 1991, it's a 20 years old lady with an only small issue we have to fix here today, changing the CMOS battery inside. Yeah, so then let's take a closer look to the computer. Once it opened you can see the nice simple design, a very nice keyboard which gives you the feeling of a real big one and the 8.5 inch VGA monochrome LCD display completes the simple requirements of a laptop back in the days. Yeah, what else can we find here on this computer? Here we have the 3.5 inch floppy drive. Here we have two PS2 connectors for an external keyboard and an external mouse. On the back side we have here the power supply connector, two parallel ports, one serial port and underneath this cover a bus connector, this was the connection for a typical docking station back in the days. On the other side we have the compartment for the batteries, so the battery is not existing anymore fortunately. And underneath this cover we can find the VGA connector for an external monitor. Yeah, after disassembling the computer we can see here the nice simple mainboard so it's very small and everything there we need over here already the dallas uh, real-time clock with the battery inside we have to change and here our 386 cpu here i have already a replacement for our dallas chip we have to desolder this is done straightforward with the soldering iron and some solder wick in the 90s they still used lead for soldering and this is much easier to get out of the holes as this lead free stuff from today. Yeah, and here we have this small little bastard which gives all collectors so much headache. No matter when you see check some error at a startup on a retro PC, you just hope that there is a just normal battery inside you can change easily. Yeah, and sometimes, like here, you don't have the luck and you have to invest some extra work. I am also always cleaning the solder pads with some alcohol to remove the burnt flux from the desoldering process. A clean surface is a must for a nice result when you put the new chip inside. The soldering is also just straightforward and can be done with a standard soldering iron. The pitch of the pins from our chip is 2.54 mm and for this you even don't need an extra fine soldering tip. Just take always care that you don't put too much solder on the pins to avoid any shorts. To be sure, I can recommend to inspect at the end your solder work always with a magnifying glass. Finally done, I'm quite happy with the result. So we are almost there that we can build the laptop back together. But there's still something else I discovered. On the second PCB inside, which contains the keyboard chip and the power supply, I found some caps which were leaking. I recognized this smell already when I was dissembling the computer. So again some solder work and I decided to change all electrolytic capacitors to avoid any further repairing. This turned out now to become more work to maintain this computer than I expected on the beginning. One hour later all caps are changed and I'm ready to reassemble the laptop. This gave me also some headache cause I did not sort the screws and parts nicely, so it took me a while to find out where which part had its right place. So I can definitely recommend that you always take care and clear pictures or sort your parts while disassembling, especially when there is one week in between and you forgot all this already.
Yeah, and we are now ready to switch on the machine and let's see if we have a boot screen. Yes, so we have a post screen and I expect now the error message that we have a boot failure because it doesn't recognize the hard disk. Yeah, here we have it. So we go directly to the very simple BIOS and we change over here the hard disk type to 40 megabytes. There are just some values available. Yeah, so nothing more to do. And yeah, let's see if we can boot up now the system. Yeah, the only thing I'm wondering is that the internal power supply is doing some fizzle noise. Although I changed all the capacitors, it's somehow strange. So let's see, yes, it's booting now. This shows us that our repairing was successful and everything is working quite fine so far. Yeah, Windows 3.1 runs quite nicely on a 386 SX machine. And this VGA LCD monochrome display looks still pretty good after 28 years. I really thought that I finished now with the repairing and then I discovered this. Look at that. The ribbon cable, the very thin ribbon cable which is connecting the LCD is somehow broken. Crazy. I get really mad now because this was not before I disassembled it. Maybe I damaged it. Yeah, so I can hardly get the contact and this means now again disassembling and thinking for a solution to fix this. And again some additional lot of work for me now. Yeah, after disassembling the whole laptop again, I have to get now access to the LCD panel and yeah, I was very very mad already and my patience was on the end. So this greyish cover you can see here is somehow very hardly stick to the screen so I have to remove it with screwdrivers and so on. So yeah, I was, I was already mad at this time. Yeah, so this thing was really hard to remove and I had to take care to get it off in a complete condition that I'm able to put it back at the end when everything is hopefully uh, repaired. Yeah, so this is a kind of uh, metal foil and yeah, some damages from the screwdriver. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, and here we have this broken ribbon cable which we have to replace yeah and the problems are getting more and more on the other side we have here a broken hinge crazy but let's see yeah this very thin ribbon cable is directly soldered to the screen so my idea now is to desolder it from the lcd panel and use a, a normal ribbon cable um, from floppy drives to connect it directly to the main board. Yeah, this soldering was just straightforward with the soldering iron, removing first some soldering with solder wick and then getting off the cable from the panel. So luckily it's just a normal PCB which is mounted here so we don't have to uh, take care of burning a foil or something like that with the soldering iron. Yeah, and here we have this 20 pin very thin ribbon cable actually when a ribbon cable like that is broken inside once you cannot repair it anymore you definitely have to replace it and yeah i don't have original spare part available of course and therefore i will go for a 20 pin uh, standard ribbon cable which i'm going to solder directly to the main board and on the other side i'm going to solder it uh, to the panel yeah once um, i have split up the ends I have to solder these 20 pins here to the LCD panel and the other side to the main board. And in between um, I'm going to put a connection that uh, I can disconnect the cable in case of any other repairings again. 
yeah, by soldering the cable is just uh, be always sure that you have an overview on which cable you are soldering to which pad, that you don't mix them up. Yeah, at the end, this whole project turned out already uh, for me uh, to become a soldering training. Yeah, it's quite a lot of work I didn't expect to do, but yeah. As we are retro lovers, we would like to keep all our retro equipment alive. Yeah, finally ready. I'm quite happy with the result and everything is soldered proper. So the cable is fortunately thin enough to fit between the panel and the cover of the, of the laptop. So now the only thing which is remaining is to split up the cables uh, on the other side and again some soldering and soldering and soldering. And again soldering on the main board underneath the connector of the ribbon cable. So it was also a very narrow soldering and challenging topic. So, but at the end it looked quite fine and we have the cable connected as I wanted to have it. There is also an empty socket on this main board for our floating point unit, so I want to upgrade it and complete the board with a Cyrix 387 FPU. So let's put it gently in and now we have full floating point calculation power, although I might never need it, but it's just to have a fully populated main board. And last but not least I had to solder some pin headers to our ribbon cables to have a proper connection in between. Yeah, it's not the most beautiful solution, but good enough and it will be anyway hidden inside the computer. The reassembling after the second time now was a bit easier for me and at this point I still thought it was the last time to do this. Switching on and testing again, so everything sounds normal. And we have a post screen, but there is still this uh, noise from the power supply, which I cannot explain really, because I changed all capacitors in the power supply. Yeah, and then suddenly this happened. Blank screen with two lines, everything stopped working and the internal power supply got fully hot. After disassembling the whole thing again I found out that some of the small capacitors inside the LCD panel were defective and creating a full short now. This was also the strange noise I could hear always from the PSU. So I removed them and cause I had no replacements here I wanted to try powering up the system without them. Everything seemed to be ok now and even without the capacitors the LCD was surprisingly working. I got some artifacts on the screen, but for now I don't care about them. I'm going to solder new caps at a later point. After reassembling uh, the thing for the third time, I was quite sure that everything is working fine now. Our connector and the ribbon cable found also its place inside and got nicely hidden by this cover. some double-sided tape I used to fix the grey frame back on its place around the LCD panel. With some glass cleaner I gave the case the right finish and the condition of this laptop at the end is very satisfying for its age. We yeah, are ready for the last uh, hardware check. At Norton we can see here nicely the 386 16 MHz. This 387 is also installed now. We have the 40 MB of hard disk drive and our floppy disk drive and here the 1 MB of memory. This info shows up with 9.2 points for the CPU speed. Check it gives us um, a score of 3069 points for the CPU speed and 770 kilo wheat stones for the floating point unit. Yeah, also California games and retro games from back in the days. 
is also nicely playable on this 386 machine. Yeah, at the end I'm quite happy that I did the whole repairing on this thing. Um, a lot of parts left over here, this crazy ribbon cable, this bastard Dallas chip you have to change always, a lot of capacitors and leftover parts. Yeah, uh, I would not have done it if I knew from the beginning on how many issues I have to face here, but at the end I'm quite happy that I saved this laptop and kept it functional now. Yeah, I hope you like this video and if so please subscribe or leave me a comment below. Have a nice day and see you next time.